Hi, I'm Rishi Basalia, and this is the This Is How I Work interviews at the Plant Biology Conference in beautiful Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm joined today by Dr. Sarah Wyatt from Ohio University. Sarah, if you want to tell us a little bit about your research uh, that your lab does. Yeah, my uh, lab, typically we work on signaling events in plants. Um, one of the main focuses of the plant is gravitropic and signaling, um, how plants actually signal that movement in between the biophysical stimulus and the biochemical response, trying to connect those two dots. Very cool, very cool. So if you could take one word to describe your day-to-day -day routine, what would it be? Hectic. <laughs> Hectic? <laughs> Hectic. Do you care to elaborate on that a little bit? Well, you know, I'm teaching and I'm doing research and, you know, my, my office is in the back of the lab and I always have an open door policy and I can hear all the students. It's really funny. <laughs> I can hear all the students and everything they say out in the lab and they can't hear a word from me. <laughs> so I, I get some interesting uh, get a lot insights, of <laughs> shall we say, from what's going from, on. From your students and what's going yeah, on in your lab. what's going on in the lab. Very nice, very nice. So, so as plant biologists, mm -hmm. we all have a favorite plant. What is your favorite plant? Arabidopsis. Arabidopsis. It's uh, our research model system. It is. It is it my is. favorite plant. It's, it's, can you elaborate a little bit more on why you like Arabidopsis, aside from the fact that it's a model? But it's easy to grow. We can grow hundreds of them. We can do genetic. It has all these genetic and genomic resources available. So we have a better shot at being able to answer some of our questions because we have this huge available resource right. out there. The entire right. research community has built this over the last 20 years. Very nice. Uh, can you describe uh, briefly one of the cooler projects that, that your lab is working on currently? Um, one of the things that we do is we work with the GPS response, which basically plants remember. If you take a plant and you put it on its side at four degrees, right. then you take it out of the refrigerator and you put it up, yep. it actually bends in response to that stimulus. Really? So that's one of the, the features of my lab, how we've separated the, the signaling um, the stimulus, the gravity stimulus from mm -hmm. the response, because oxen doesn't move, mm -hmm. so it moves again once you get out, so you get that bending. Oh, really? That's fascinating. So we know we're before oxen. Well, we, we believe we are. That is fascinating. So that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. Plants remember. Plants remember. Um, so one of the more fun questions I like to ask is, if a magical genie appeared out of an Erlenmeyer flask and grant you any wish, what would you want it to be? Funding of my next grant. <laughs> Spoken like a true faculty. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't tell you I wanted my lab endowed. That's what I always, I always say. You know, if I if I win won the lottery, yes. you know, people ask me what would you do with that yeah, money, and I said I would on. endow my lab. <laughs> Secure but, it for the future. But the reality is, being part of that competitive grant system nope. keeps you on your toes. It, it keeps does. it at the edge of science. So yep. you know, I, it'd be nice if that the granting agencies had some more money for us and make that a little less competitive yeah. but yeah, yeah it's a great it's a great system okay okay um so a standard question we like to ask is how do you learn new things now how do i how learn do you, new how do you now that now that you're out of you're out of graduate school you're a faculty member you're training new students how do you learn new things a lot of the new stuff i learn is from my students my goal is to have my students be better than I am That's in any goal. whichever, in whatever area that they're mm -hmm. pursuing. And I learn new things from them every single day, every fantastic. single day. That is, that is fantastic. Um, so when you are putting the pipette down or you're not thinking about science, what are you actually doing or what are you thinking about? I'm thinking about science. <laughs> <laughs> Again, spoken like a true faculty member. Science I'm, is always in the back of the brain. Science is always in the back of the brain. It's either connected to what I'm teaching or what I'm doing, or you know, I like to swim, and there's a lot of quiet time there. Mm -hmm. And you know, my thinking is always going back to the projects. I used to commute back and forth to work, okay. and that time was kind of gearing up and thinking about science and you know what I was going to do and yep. getting it organized and going home. I was thinking about a new project. You know, a lot of my proposals, a lot of new courses, all those things, right. they're developed right. either in the car traveling or swimming in the pool. You know, my mind's just kind of always there in the back, churning. Very yep. nice, very nice. So if you could recommend another person to do this, this is how I work, interview series, who would it be? Who would it be? Simon Gilroy. Simon Gilroy. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. We have, to, we have to see if we can get Simon in here to do one of these interviews, but... but now we can contact him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, so I would love to hear what he had to yeah, say. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would. 
All right, well, Dr. Wyatt, thank you so much for, for being with us in this interview series. Thank you.